Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and it is 12:39 a.m. EST and we just got a lovely Black Magic update for the camera app for Android. So this is their 1.1 update and we've got some juicy things to kind of play catch up on. If you're on iOS, there's no new features on Android that iOS doesn't have. We are seeing this as an update to basically catch up and add more device support. Now, if you haven't seen my videos in a while, I made one video when they first announced uh, Blackmagic Camera App for Android, and there was essentially very little device support. If you had the latest Samsung phone or the latest Pixel line, that was the only phones officially supported. I then made an update video a couple days later, thanks to a bunch of you who helped me out. Uh, basically download the APK and showed you that on the majority of Android phones, you could actually get it to run pretty smoothly. So I've had it on my Pixel 6 Pro, but according to this update, uh, we're gonna dive deeper into it, but we can see that it adds support for the Xiaomi 13 and 14, OnePlus 11 and 12, Samsung S21, S22, the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro and 6A. So we've got some new officially supported devices, but again, if you're not on these lists still, uh, definitely check out one of my previous videos where I talk about how to get this on any Android phone by downloading the APK. But for now, I'm gonna hop on my 6 Pro and I'm actually going to delete this app and let's see if we can actually get support now. So I'm gonna head over to the Play Store. We're gonna search Blackmagic camera device is incompatible with this version. Yeah, when I go to the Play Store, you can see right there, it says Google Pixel 6 Pro, this device will not work on your device. Most likely this is just because I'm immediately jumping in and sometimes these updates take a little while. I guess I will just refresh for a bit. Six hours later. And good morning, it's about six hours later. And now if we go to the Play Store and I search Blackmagic camera app, we can see it officially pop up on my Google Pixel 6 Pro, which means we are able to install it. So I guess it just took a couple hours for the update to take full effect. So now I'm going to install the officially supported Blackmagic camera app on this phone. You can now see it on our homepage. We'll open it up, give it all of the permissions that it needs and hit continue. And now we can see we have Blackmagic camera app. So let's run through the list and see what new features have been added to kind of play catch up with iOS. All right, running down the list, we see HDMI monitoring. So if we go over to our settings and we go to monitor, we can now see an HDMI out option and we can either choose to mirror our display or turn on video feed, which would then allow us to turn on specific aspects of uh, the app. And this gives us the ability to either give like a client or director kind of a clean feed if they don't need to see all the different status text, or if it's a first AC and they're focus pulling, you can just give them uh, the focus assist. But now you're able to hook up an HDMI cable, wireless transmitter, anything like that to give you HDMI out. Looks like we finally get uh, LUT support. So if we go down to the LUT selection here, we can import our own LUT. Once we do that, we can turn it on as a display LUT and do the same, uh, either having it record straight to the clip. Next up, we have pull focus transition control. So if we jump back to our camera, go into our focus, we can now see those three little triangles on the left hand side, just like on iOS. And this is where we can set up to do focus pull. So if I want to say focus on this right here, yeah, those don't seem to be working for me right now. Long presses, holds, all that. Blackmagic Cloud Organizations. Uh, this one I won't really be able to test, but if you have a Blackmagic Cloud Organization, if you go to log in for Blackmagic Cloud, you'll be able to do things like go into your specific uh, group within your organization and all of those features. And of course we can just log in with the Blackmagic Cloud seems to be new. A 
ability to dim screen while recording. If we go into our camera section of settings, we can see that now as a default, the turn on is to uh, while recording swipe right to dim our screen. So if I go in here and record, and then I swipe right, we can see that the whole screen dims, we just have our record button. And this hopefully conserves battery, uh, probably more so just saves on like heat. Uh, so your phone doesn't overheat as much. These ones may be Android specific, to be honest. If I go into settings, again, under camera, we can see reduce noise and increase sharpening. Uh, so I'm actually going to turn increase sharpening off. This is something that I don't believe is on iOS only because on here we don't have any sort of like Apple log features. Uh, audio level pop up. It looks like we can tap on our audio right now and get a larger view of the meters. What I'm curious for is, does this finally give us the control uh, if we have an external audio plugged in? Grab the DJI mic right here. It says wireless, but the metering doesn't work. And I don't see any controls for us. So it looks like for now, it's just uh, gives us the ability to see a larger audio monitor. Uh, looks like if you're in Japan and you need Japanese translations, you get that now. If we go under settings and media, we can see a toggle for record proxy. So if you want the option to not create a proxy file, you can have uh, originals only to upload to Blackmagic Cloud or just to save to the device. And it looks like the biggest feature that was missing from the Android version that iOS had was to save to an external storage. Now, if we go under media, we'll see save clips to, and we now have a file section. So now hopefully if your phone internal storage doesn't have that much space, you can now save to an external drive, allowing you to edit off of that SSD or just save a ton of space on your phone. So besides that, they say there's some general performance and improvements. It seems like this was a huge update to catch up to its iOS counterpart. We did not get any sort of update last night for the iOS version, so it seems like they really just want to get these on the same kind of level playing field. I'd have to go through and compare to see if there are still any major differences between the two now. My guess is that as soon as they get this caught up, they will start releasing updates for both devices at the same time with the same features. At least that's my hope, and that's what Blackmagic seems to do. Uh, with some of its other software and services. So there you have it. That is the Android 1.1 update for the Blackmagic camera app. Let me know in the comments below if all this is working for you, if there's any features you're still missing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.